Hi all, welcome to the channel. And uh, this video is with respect to my previous uh, video which I published on Automation 360 and Chat GPT integration. I was getting many queries like how I implemented that. People were interested in knowing the code and the configuration part of it. So I thought I'll create a detailed step-by-step -step video on it. Uh, let's get started with it. Here for that in, for this integration i have used interactive forms of uh, from automation 360 site and a chatbot which i have used to connect to the chat gpt via the api uh, like querying it via the api so let's dive in and let me first show you the interactive form that i have built using automation 360 platform it's a very basic one so in the form i have just drag and drop the text box where you can enter your question and then i have a button to submit your response and on submitting your response we get the uh, sorry on submitting your qu query we get the response from the chat gpt so for that i have used here a text area so you can simply drag and drop from the left pane uh, left pane here you can drag and drop the objects uh, uh, so this is a label then there's a text box and according to that uh, you get the id of that text box made this as a required field then here you have you can you can drag and drop the submit button i have checked this option to validate all forms uh, it, it validates all your input whether you have entered your input or not so i've just um, checked that for a validation purpose and the text of the button and the styling of the button okay you can change it uh, whatever you like for example if you keep it secondary then it will be like this so and then uh, here the label of the element and then the response of the element that we'll be getting it's a text area object and here i have made i have made this as uneditable field because it is just response uh, it is just responsible for holding the response that we get back from the chat gpt so this preview you can see the preview this is how your form would look like if you want to set the resolution you can try it out setting uh, various display resolution as well so uh, that's uh, about it. That's the basic form that we have been using here. Let me go to the bot. So in this bot, uh, what I have done, let, uh, before going back, uh, like before going into detail, let me uh, show you some of the prerequisites that you will be needing here. You need a API key. You need, you can generate it by visiting to this website like beta.openai. I'll be, I'll be pasting all these links in the description from there. You can copy it and refer it easily. So once you click this link, you'll be presented with this kind of an interface where you can generate your secret key. The secret key is needed to access the open API uh, uh, endpoints. This is the endpoint where we'll be like we'll be calling this endpoint and uh, we'll be getting the response. And then after that, uh, whatever uh, is mentioned, what we need to put in header and then the custom parameters, I'll come to this in a while. So coming back to the chatbot. So the very first step here, uh, I have included interactive forms, display form. So from in the actions, you can go to interactive forms and in the interactive form, you can pick this display action display action lets you choose a variable name for your form you have to create here uh, you need to create a form type of variable and then in the default value you have to choose the form that we have created in this case in my case it was ask me anything form so you have to choose that okay so that will be your default value for your variable let me get rid of this so this statement will pop up the form this will display a form to the user then user can enter the query and uh, when when the user will be hitting submit it will query it will pass on the query to the chat gpt api and then the api will give us the response so here i have included trigger loop for example uh, i have included trigger loop for uh, like whenever a user clicks on a button then my loop uh, like trigger loop activates and the next set of action is perform. So once the form is shown, shown to, to the user, I am not doing anything. The bot is not doing anything. The bot is waiting for a trigger or an event to happen. So that trigger is clicking on this submit button. 
So here, once the user click on this submit button or uh, button zero in uh, in the backend, it is referred to as a button zero. So once the user clicks on this button zero, and the rest of the code is getting executed. So here, um, I've, I have included this in error handling. Uh, from uh, we are getting the value of the text box. So whatever the user has entered in this text box, the query of the user, it might be any question that user have entered. So that we are getting in this variable, user query variable. And how we are getting that? Using interactive forms get action method. Okay. Uh, form name, you have to pass form name, then the uh, element which is we want to get the value from text box. So text box of zero, and we are storing it in a variable. Then after this, we are calling the REST API. We are calling the open. Uh, API, the endpoint that uh, I, had, I had shown you earlier. So this is the main step here. So in the enter the URI, this is the URI which uh, I'll be entering here, the completion URI. Then in the header section, in the header section, we need to pass the authorization and bearer token. So in this case, bearer, the token is your API key that you will be generating using this a URL. Okay. So let me show you here. Um, you have to type this like authorization and after this bearer and the key. So here I have created a key uh, string variable and I have inserted my key over there. But you can directly paste it here, get it from the credential or variableize it or you can uh, directly paste it here as well. But as a security practice, you should follow getting the keys or credentials uh, like keys or a secret or a password from uh, your credential vault that's a best practice okay but for a demo purpose we can try to go with this up and then the custom parameters in custom parameters these are the json parameters that you will be passing to the uh, web api so here i have included the custom parameters you will you can get these custom parameters you can copy it from the uh, description of this video so in model, uh, I'm passing the model as a variableized model. Okay. In prompt, I'm passing the, whatever the uh, question was, uh, user query was, right? Whatever the user entered in the text box. The basically the query of the user. The max token, max token size, I am also taking it from a variable. But these variables, these two variables, max token and model, I have hard coded it. And this user query, this prompt uh, uh, parameter, I'm taking it dynamically from the user. Okay, then these are the rest of the parameters which API is, uh, which API takes. So uh, for model, I'll I'll paste this. I'll I'll remove the variableized part while pasting this in my description of this video so that you don't have to worry about it. Okay, you can directly copy paste it in your uh, custom param. Here I have. Uh, I have included a DT response. That's a dictionary variable uh, to hold a output or a response of this uh, API. So let me enab enable this message box for you, uh, just to show you how the resp how uh, we are getting the response. So let me enable it, and then after this, what we are doing is we are extracting the JSON. Okay. So let me run this. Uh, so that uh, you are able to see the response and uh, the rest of the code, why we are doing the JSON extraction will make sense for you. Okay, so we got this form displayed. So let me type here how to learn RPA to get a job. Okay, let's ask a bot and let's click on the submit. As soon as I click on submit button, the trigger loop uh, got activated and it fired the query so it will it will query the api and it will fetch us the response so in the so we have enabled the message box so in the message box you can see the json response from this json response we are interested in the text part right so the, the text is the one that we are interested in
so how to retrieve this text so out of this json we just need to retrieve the text which lies under choices right so that's why we'll be doing some json manipulation using json package so that we get the clean response and the model that i was talking right this is the model text hyphen darwin c003 this is the model that we are using over here and the tokens this is the token value right so all the values that you will be get here uh, you will be getting over here in the json response so let me close this and you can see here the, the response we got right how to learn RPA to get a job, start familiarizing yourself with the basic of RPA and all, uh, take online course. So whatever are the chat GPT respond based on the model that we have configured, um, we got this response. Okay. So let me stop this and show you the rest of the code and let me disable this for now. And yeah, so uh, our response was into the text variable. So I have clicked on, um, I, have, I have used this JSON package just to extract the JSON key that we need, key and a value that we need. So uh, here uh, you can you can pass the, uh, our response is coming in DT response uh, dictionary and the body parameter. If you, if you click here, if you go here, you can, see this uh, the the body uh, in the body key you can fetch the response of the api so it is it always come into this body so we are using dt response dictionary variable body as an input to this uh, json session and then we are extracting or we are getting the node this node value of this node choices of zero dot text so it will give us all and uh, the response the the value that is being held into this right so we'll get that into a response variable i have created one response string variable that will hold the entire uh, value which is coming in this node it, json node or json key so once we get that we just end the session here and then after that, what we have to do, we have to set that response or we have to uh, put that response over here. How we do that? Again, we use interactive form set action. And then we just pull up the form name and we configure the text area because we want to put it into text area. And then what value we want to append or override. In this case, we want to override. So we have selected override and the variable so that's that's how we are uh, i'm doing it and here we can break the loop if if you want to perform this action and want to exit uh, you can break it here uh, i wanted to try that out for multiple times so that's why i have disabled it and in catch i have just displayed a message box in case of any error in this in real time scenario or in your use case you can try to log that error message or probably email any question, any query you have regarding implementing this, uh, you can post your queries in the comment section below. Uh, let me ask how important is Python for RPA developer? Let's ask this question and click on submit. This time there is a no message box, so we'll directly see the response and we got the response. This was, this was pretty quick. So that's all guys. If you like the video, please uh, share it with your friends. Also subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.